How you doing guys? I think it's always important to increase your skills in pretty much any area, specifically if you're a prepper and you're trying to be prepared in general and prepared for all sorts of different situations. It's important to have a lot of varied skills and uh, those could be normal like wilderness survival skills, could be hand-to-hand -hand combat, cooking, fixing, welding, whatever. It's important to know a lot of these things if you can. And one thing that I have a uh, practice with a little bit. I think it's a cool and fun thing to do and also could be useful in some point in the future is to learn lock picking, at least rudimentary lock picking. I'm by no means an expert, but I have been able to do it a couple times and it's actually come in handy. Now, before you go crazy, I'm not talking about using these skills for like breaking into places, but uh you, I'm sure you can come up with scenarios where it may be useful to get into a lock that you don't have the key for. In my case, that's happened because I had lost my key to my locks and then had to pick it. And uh, one time was a display case and I didn't have the uh, key for it and never needed it and it accidentally got locked and I, I had never had the key for it so I had to pick the lock on it and get into it that way. And uh, it was my own display case, so it's not like I was breaking into somebody's uh, house or something. But it is something that can come in handy. and. A lot of locks work the same, and uh, even today in 2012, most locks are a normal pin system, a tumbler with pins in it, and they can be picked the same way. Some certain specific locks are designed to be harder to pick, where you have to learn a different technique to pick them, but the one that I'm gonna share with you today will work on majority of normal like padlocks and door locks, deadbolts, even most car um, door locks that don't have uh, electronic security systems and stuff like that. And what you're going to need is to buy a basic set of lock picking tools. Now, you have to be careful because of all sorts of stupid laws. Just carrying these around can be um, a dubious legality in some situations. It's not illegal to have them because there are legitimate purposes, like I mentioned. But there are certain rules about like instruments of burglary and stuff like that, where if they surmise that your intent is to commit a crime, then it's illegal to have them. It's, it's, it's garbage. But... Uh, just keep that in mind, maybe do some research before getting these things, but uh, it, usually you can buy these without any specific uh, legal restrictions on them. The, you can buy them off of eBay or whatever. And this is just a general set of picks and rakes because there's um, the basic technique for lock picking is that when you have the pins in a tumbler, the key is a certain shape so that when it slides into the lock, the pins will be aligned in a certain way. And when they're aligned in that certain way, the lock will be able to turn. And that's just a rudimentary explanation, but it gives you a general idea. So the idea of picking is to put the keys or put the pins in those position without having the key. But you don't really know what the position is going to be. So the way that it's done is you take a tool called a tension bar, which is this thing right here. It's this little L-shaped, kind of like an Allen wrench, but flat. And you insert that into the lock and you turn it slightly in the direction that you would to unlock it. And that puts it under tension, hence the name tension bar. And then you use a pick or a rake. What I've used most commonly is a raking technique because it's easiest. So when the, the lock is under tension, then you, this is a rake right here. Just a little, let me see if I can, this is a little curved piece of metal. And there's all sorts of different shapes in here. As you can see, this kit has a bunch of different ones in there. I've only ever used one or two because of the simple technique for most locks will work. So you have the, the lock under tension with the tension bar and then you insert the rake and literally you just push up the pins and rake back and forth while maintaining pressure in the direction you want to open. And as the pin, because of that tension, as the pins fall to the place where they need to be to open, they kind of stop there and get stuck and it maybe goes a little bit further until most of them are in the position and then it just opens. It sounds ridiculously simple and honestly the first time I did it, it I worked the first time I did it at a house I was renting and I picked the lock in like 30 to 45 seconds and I'd never done it before and it was at the same time it was both empowering and incredibly scary because I was like holy shit I've never done this before and I opened my lock at my house in like 30 seconds so someone who knows what they're even someone else who doesn't know what they're doing could get in here in like 30 seconds that's another reason why I recommend something like the on guard or physically blocking your door and uh because you don't want to be susceptible to this or kick-ins. But yeah, it's really that simple. And then picking is just the same technique, but instead of raking, you're pushing the pins into place individually until they stick and then opening. But I've had the raking technique work for me on the several times. It's only been three or four times I've ever had to pick a lock and uh, it's worked and it's done so in under a minute pretty much every time, which is incredibly crazy seeming to me because each time I'm like, well, I really don't know what I'm doing. It worked last time, but 
It must have just been a fluke and then it's done the same thing every time. So like I said, incredibly uh, empowering feeling and also incredibly scary because you feel very vulnerable if all the locks are that easy to pick. Now all these different shapes of rakes and picks you can use. I haven't really studied the art of lock picking. It's something I'd like to in the beginning, or not in the beginning, but eventually. But all I've really used is this. This is one of the more general shaped picks, rakes. And they have other ones, as you can see, the different jagged ends and stuff like that. I don't know if you can see all the different... And there's two different size tension bars. Actually, I've got... Yeah. So you can see one's a little thinner than the other. This one's actually just a flat bar, whereas this one has a turn in it, so it allows you to push down on a flat part while this is also one, so I prefer this one, but this one works too. And as you can see, to get to end up with something like this, you literally just have a bent piece of metal here and a piece of metal with a little jagged end. So you could construct these out of all sorts of different materials. This is literally just a flat piece of metal that's been bent into an L shape, and you can see that. And this isn't something that has to be exactly this shape. It can be even more simple. So it's it really is feasible that you could do this with things like a paper clip or something like that. The hard part is, is actually making the tension bar. It's probably harder than using, because almost anything can be used for a pick, like a paper clip. But that's basically the general technique. I would, uh, you can get a kit like this for like 20 bucks. If you just want the tension bar and one rake or one pick, you can probably get it even less than that. Like if you just want the two, these are literally the only ones I've used so far because I'm, I'm not an expert or even, I wouldn't even consider myself a hobbyist. It's just something that I have and I've managed to use it successfully a couple times. And just getting that uh, display case open that I talked about on my own without having to get a, uh, a key made or something was worth definitely the, the cost of this thing. And if I ever lose the key to my house or someone else loses the key to their house and I can help them out and they don't have to pay a locksmith 80 bucks or 120 bucks to do the exact same thing, then uh, it'll be worth it. And it can't hurt to have those skills in case of any sort of crazy scenario in the future where you may have to get into some place it's locked. But uh, as always, you know, check your local laws and all that nonsense. But uh, it's definitely something to look into. I've had a little fun practicing with it, and I'd like to practice some more and get good at all the different kinds of locks and get even faster and more proficient, definitely more confident with it. Because even though I've managed to do it successfully pretty much every time I've tried, I definitely don't feel like I have any particular skill in the area. I have just literally just did exactly what I described to you a few minutes ago. So uh, let me know if you guys have any experience with lock picking and uh, any ways you envision it being useful in the future.